Six months ago, I shared some honest thoughts on what it's like to learn algebra as a student. I explained how, on paper, I had performed well in difficult algebra exams at Cambridge, but that really, I had no sense of the why and struggled with the essence of the ideas. And so the natural solution is to try and go back to why it exists in the first place. What is it that drove the concept of a group and the development of its theory? And this is Galois theory. So I went looking for books that would teach groups with a constant focus on why it exists and its links to Galois theory. And the book that I found was Abstract Algebra by Marco Hien. There were lots of reasons why I thought this book could be the solution. The author promises a strong sense of the why, saying that their idea of learning math is to always ask oneself what question arises most naturally now and which ideas for an answer would I have developed if I was the first person to do so. And when I read that, my eyes lit up. I wanted to see inside the minds of the mathematicians who developed the theory. And the book uses something that I've never seen before, which are these boxes called And Now and Check It Out. These are peppered around everywhere throughout the book and are supposed to constantly be giving you a sense of where are we going, what are we trying to do, and why are we thinking about this? The other big claim of this book is that it's particularly well-suited for self-study because it arose out of a supported self-study lecture series from the author's university at the time of the pandemic. So six months later, having read the book and solved all the problems, my frustrations with algebra have completely completely lifted. I'll explain the role that this book played in that if I think it is actually as good as I had hoped for six months ago, who it is for, and now looking back being able to see what the issues were for me. How did I manage to overcome that? All right so first things first is the translation because I've seen some comments about it. So there are a couple of (laughs) German words that get left behind but it's never um, unclear what they mean. Like here for example, fur. But in all seriousness though, yes there are times where it's not the most eloquent it could be put, but it's never unclear what it means. So for me that's not an issue. So prerequisites, supposedly, is just this. So basically some linear algebra and you know what a ring is. But the sense that I got throughout the book is that there are times where it is, it feels like it's assuming you know a whole lot more than this. Like the concept of an integer ring is not really defined properly but then like talked about quite a lot as if you already know what it is. I mean, the lecture course it's based on is called an introduction to algebra, but this really is not a first exposure whatsoever. I mean, the first real chapter, it jumps straight into field extensions, but maybe you could ignore these first two chapters and go straight to groups. But these two chapters are actually really good. And these and now and check it out boxes are so strong in these chapters. For example, this one talks about how sometimes you have to switch between interpreting a field extension as just that or as a vector space over the smaller field. And depending on your situation, you have to forget one or the other. And it also talks about how often creativity is required to spot intermediate fields to help with degree calculations. So it's these details which are helping you realize what's not obvious and the mental pictures you should be building, which I think are great. So following these two somewhat motivation introductory chapters, you you then get to groups and you get two chapters and these are good in that the presentation is nice. I think if you're looking for a good explanation of quotient groups, this has a nice one for sure. But as I was reading these chapters on groups, it still wasn't really satisfying me in that it wasn't this big like mental explosion that I'd hoped for that I wasn't getting from other books. It's fairly standard presentation, but on the compassionate side. So the book starts off strong, but then you're hit with five chapters on rings. And this is where this book drops off a bit for me. Now, when I took my second algebra course, this is the point where I also thought that course dropped off as well. And so maybe it's just because it's this big wedge of content about UFDs and PIDs and EDs and you're not so sure why you're learning all these reduction mod p and Eisenstein and all of that and maybe that's just the nature of the content but this really brings me on to what I think the real strength and point of this book is and that is Galois theory and this is where in my opinion this book shines and it feels like the first 120 40 pages aren't really so much geared towards a first course in groups and rings, more as just sort of review and setup for Galois theory. These and now boxes in the Galois theory chapters end up contributing to one of the best 
motivational discussions for Gawa theory I've seen, in my opinion. Because everyone always motivates Gawa theory as it's so beautiful, it captures the symmetry of the roots, but then, in my opinion, follows that up often with an unsatisfactory explanation of what that means. But in here, the process it takes you through is if you take all the roots in a splitting field and then construct towers by adjoining them successively to the base field, and you do this twice so that the second one is a corresponding tower, but at different points you can use different roots, giving you an isomorphism at each stage. And so really what we mean by relations between roots is not just their similarity over the base field, but also their similarities over intermediate fields in these levels of extensions. And then it flows really nicely into the definition of a Galois group. It postpones the fundamental theorem for a bit, and you first get this example of x to the 5 minus 77x plus 7. And this is nice because it completely removes having to know a lot about the actual roots themselves. And instead, you find its Galois group with some more involved results from group theory. And then you get the setup and then the proof of the fundamental theorem of Galois theory. Now, in terms of problems, they don't get so difficult. Now, of course, difficulty is subjective, but compared to a Cambridge example sheet, I'd say like the hardest one, maybe sort of halfway down a Cambridge example sheet is where you might find it. Ah, let me find it. Here you go. If you know, if you know about UFDs, it was, this was up there in difficulty. Oh, and I'll be uploading all my solutions onto MathHub as a big wedge. Um, it could take a while because I don't have a scanner. <laughs> and let me know if you want that to be a feature where anyone can upload any solution to any book. I can look into implementation of that. But to summarize this book, I think it should set the standard, in my opinion, in terms of the use of these constant asking where are we emphasizing what are the important things to think about at that point in time and where are we going and having this constantly has really helped my understanding but i really would not recommend this as a first course and i don't think i would recommend it on its own as a second course just because i get this tone quite a lot of feels like it's assuming you already sort of know the stuff and that could be an issue with the translation but because I already do know on the surface a lot of it, that wasn't an issue for me. But if anyone else has read this, I'd be interested to hear what you think about that. But alongside a second course, and if you're learning Galois theory, then I think this is really good in terms of just peppering you constantly, making sure you're focusing on the right things and giving you the tools to help you think in the right way. But now this brings me on to what was the issue I was having in terms of feeling like I lacked fundamental understanding of the concepts or just the point and what I think it is to me it feels like there are a lot of different mental pictures you can grab onto in terms of just thinking about for example the concept of a group but a lot of these are a bit misleading and miss the point and so this is why I think people often have their mental picture tied too closely to the early examples they see of a group, like the integers under addition. And then this leads to issues with problems where there are groups that can behave really differently to the integers. But it's not something that is a focus of lecture courses. It's like what I was talking about in one of the and now boxes. You can interpret a field extension as a vector space as well, and you sort of have to forget one. And even just having something that tell, tells you in certain settings, you just forget one of these ideas and focus on the other one. That is helping build this mental picture. And I think for me, getting tied too closely to specific examples led to just fundamentally missing the point of a group in that ultimately you actually don't care about the set, right? Sometimes interpreting the set as an object you've met before is useful in terms of defining the binary operation, but ultimately all you care about is the operation, the way of combining elements. That's the structure. And so there are a lot of comments being like, well, actually, I don't think Galois theory is going to really help you understand groups better. 
Because the point is there are so many different areas in mass where you can interpret something as having a binary operation on them. And then when your mental picture is being focused on the structure, on the operation, and not the fact it's the integers or matrices or whatever, then it makes complete sense as to why we care about these things. And I'll be honest, my interests have transitioned away from analysis and I've gotten hooked on algebra. But if you feel like you're struggling with a similar issue in terms of feeling like you're lacking the right mental framework to engage with these abstract concepts, then I've put together 10 lessons which cover the fundamentals of groups. But with everything in that, I'm constantly banging on about how you should be thinking about this the right mental picture you should be having and the common pitfalls that people fall into, showcasing non-standard interesting examples to help give you an idea of just how rich the concept of a group is. And you can find this course on MathHub with problem sheets, hints and video solutions. So what's next for me on this journey? Well, representation theory, I wanna go deeper, more algebraic topology, do more work on homology, and also, please give me suggestions about further studies in algebra, perhaps with applications to other areas. Anyways, this is what six months looks like. And hopefully, you'll now be able to better spot what an unread book looks like on a book review. <laughs>